spent 20 years battling this. You are a major target. Get out of here or shut up and shut it down. Because most other people are cowards. There aren't a lot of other outlets that will cover things like this. And so you better believe I'm a major target. But I'm not going to shut it down and I'm not going to shut up because, sure, I could run from this for a while. We all collectively got in this position by running from tyranny and by trying to appease it and by not going up against it. And it's like being beat up once a week by a bully at school. You finally decide to fight back. And even if you lose the fight, they'll move on to somebody weaker because you fought back and bloodied their nose as well. And politically, not physically, it's time to start bloodying the establishment's nose. And that's what it's going to do when doctors and nurses don't shut up and go public with what the head of the retired Border Patrol Union has said, what Border Patrol active duty officers have told us, point blank, here in Austin and in Las Vegas at a medical conference Dr. Group was attending. That, yes, they're whisking people away and disappearing them. Now, if they were doing that to stop panic, it would still be illegal and dangerous. But you could argue you don't want to create a panic. Not when they're letting the flight still in and clearly letting it spread. So, see, they want the tyranny to whisk away whoever they want and create that precedent with secret medical armies backed up by paramilitary. They want to introduce the idea of this going on while letting the crisis intensify. Former top Border Patrol agent, CDC disappearing potential Ebola victims. That's from October 10th, 2014, 13 days ago. And I'll continue reading from the article. Former Border Patrol agent, Zach Taylor, has divulged that the CDC is working with Border Patrol authorities and the Department of Homeland Security to disappear potential Ebola victims attempting to cross the border into the United States. I want Don Salazar and Kurt Nemo and Kit Daniels and Paul Watson and Steve Watson and Mikhail Thalen to all write about this from your own angle. With Zach Taylor and these medical doctors, whatever angle you want to go with, but showing the history of them aiding and abetting the Ebola virus to try to raise the alarm. And, and Watson's usually listening, but he's over in England. He went back to London. He visited with us for three weeks. He's thinking about coming here part-time in the years to you know, work over here with us. Call Watson. Have him call Steve. And I, I just they need to tune into what you're about to hear. <sighs> oh, man. See, when I'm up here talking about genderless gingerbread figurines and the mayor wanting to arrest, because that's what the subpoenas were, was for a criminal investigation of preachers that speak out against homosexuality. What are we doing with, with stores saying we're only going to have ginger, genderless gingerbread people to not offend folks, and they want to arrest preachers for reading out of the Bible, and you got all these mystery illnesses flooding across the border, And you've got people still rioting in St. Louis and, and, and Ferguson. And Africa has clearly been hit by some type of bioweapon, souped up Ebola. We had Francis Boyle that wrote the U.S. Biological Weapons Treaty that got adopted worldwide. Biological weapons expert. Dr. Francis Boyle is also a lawyer. And he says it's a government operation. Wayne Madsen, formerly the NSA, says it's a government operation, names names. The African scientists are saying that. We have BBC pieces, video pieces from the 90s admitting the South African government created weaponized airborne Ebola and stuff to sterilize blacks. I mean, I wish all this intel wasn't just rolling in. You think we like breaking one week after Benghazi, that it was a hit of the ambassador because he didn't want to transfer Stinger missiles to Al-Qaeda. And that we predicted they would then say prepare for the Stinger attacks in the West, which they're now doing. But never pointing out that our government armed them. Do you think it's fun? I just want you to know, for people that are new listeners and go, oh, this is off the chart crazy. This stuff's too intense. 
I'm sorry, that's what's really going on. I don't want this to be this way either, okay? But what does this tell us about our government? Major medical doctors have told us off record, people I know good, that Ebola is spreading in the U.S. in major hospitals all over the place. And they're whisking the people away and they don't know where. And they're telling them, shut up and say that it's some type of African fever or uh, jungle fever or uh, that it's some type of malaria. When it's not. Malaria doesn't cause big bloody pustules all over you. <sighs> We're going to go to break. I'm going to try to get my mind focused and say a little prayer for my family, everybody else, because we're all in this together. And this is how they're bringing in the world government, a stage crisis. is what the North American Union documents show from 2007, Banff, Canada. We'll be right back. And the heads up, a major hospital operation, multiple hospitals, that indeed Ebola, what they believe is Ebola, is showing up. We are getting whistleblower contacts now pouring in from customs and border enforcement and other agencies confirming what we've gotten from our other ICE sources and our medical doctor sources that there are people that have Ebola-like symptoms coming off of West African flights all over the United States and they're being ordered to release them when they screen positive for Ebola with the first test. And by that, the first test just shows that it's probable that you have it and that you need to go for further screening and an official test. And they just are ordered to release them. This is the type of, of intel with people saying, I work for ICE, here's my number, call me at lunch. And then we call these people medical doctors and others, and they give us their info and who they are, and we call them on the hospital phone and get them on at the hospital, separate from people we know. So obviously, what we're going to do here today is open the phones up after this doctor that's coming on in a few minutes and the next segment leaves us so that more medical doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, Border Patrol, Customs Enforcement, TSA, you name it, police officers, so you can call in, and if you want to go on record, you can. We'll call you, vet who you are. We have folks you know, send us a copy of their driver's license. Um, we call you at work. That's what we do. We don't just get a call from a guy saying he's a medical doctor and then just... Believe it, we go and find them on the hospital website. We call them up at work. We talk to them at work. That's what we do. It's not just that they're letting the Ebola spread. It's that they're covering it up. And I guess they think they can contain it. Or maybe they want it to be out of control. I don't know. I just know it's criminal. It's out of control. And what does it say about the people running this country? The British for two months plus have sealed their borders and don't let flights in from West Africa and screen people who jump from other countries. They have a global database of where you came from. Interpol databases, other databases, credit card records. That's all run through the computers to begin with. Worldwide, unless you live in the middle of nowhere and you're going and paying some small airline, you know, in some 10-seater or six-seater to fly you over the mountain in, in Alaska, unless you're flying on planes that way or you're hitching a ride with somebody who's a private pilot, you're in the system. And there aren't a lot of private pilots flying in out of West Africa into North America, I'll assure you. So they know what's going on. And it's so bold, it's so crazy, it's got so many angles, it gives me a headache. 
Interpol, yeah, is moving with face scanning globally when you travel. By the way, Interpol's worldwide. By the way, the head of Interpol earlier this year said that they should arm everyone worldwide and that would stop Islamists attacking shopping malls and other facilities like 